Hello everyone, my name is Michael Young, and this is Darkest Dungeon. This is a great game. I played it a bit in early access, I've dabbled a bit on it since. I think it's time for a full playthrough. I'm going to play on Darkest Mode. That's normal difficulty. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. It's a good intro. I love the narration in this game. Okay, so this game kind of has two modes to it. It has a large structure that everything else fits in, and it has these individual expeditions. This is an example of an expedition. The idea of these is you're in a dungeon or some other labyrinth with lots of different rooms in them and you need to travel along these hallways between rooms. Most of the time, the way um, completing the expedition involves reaching and clearing most or all of the rooms. So. Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. <sighs> Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. Bad luck, I got surprised right away. So, the idea of combat, it's all turn-based. Each hero has four abilities. Each ability can be used from certain ranks of these four ranks, and can only be, only be targeted on certain ranks of the enemy. So this, Open Vein, can be used in the first three slots, and you can hit people in the first two slots. It does simple damage, and potentially puts a bleed, a, a damage over time ability on it. And it missed. Bad luck. But I dodged, so it all works out. Double dodge. As the fiend falls, <laughs> the fiend then you get gold, uh, potentially items, relics, that are more useful not here, but in the larger structure, in your hamlet. So let's get everyone back into the right order and keep going. You can explore this tent. Ooh, gems. Leave nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. That's a good starting item. <laughs> An ambush. Send these vermin. Ooh, I surprised them. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Okay, so now that my highwayman is back in the second rank, he has access to more abilities. So we can use pistol shot, which can hit the uh, the second, third, or fourth rank, which includes this guy because he's big enough that he takes up both slots. He can use grape shot blast, which does both hits both of them at once, and tracking shot, which doesn't do much damage but gives him a buff for more damage. In this fight, there's some tension between killing this guy real quick or trying to go for their range attacker. I think I'm going to go for the range attacker. So. Should be able to get him dead next turn. My Crusader, the frontline warrior, is not able to hit the back rank. Not with any of the abilities he's got. So I'm going to... No, the stun chance for this guy is only 50%. See the resistances down there. 
And so it didn't work. Sad. It's fine. Okay, let's kill this guy. Is broken. And now just the offensive. Ah, my crusader is not doing very well today. <laughs> That was unlucky. This guy has only a speed value of one, so it's unusual that he would go first in each round. There, there's a bleed, so he's taking damage every turn for a few turns. But he'll be dead before that finishes out. food, some crests. Now I can return or I can continue. There's nothing to do here except for look at this chest, which is called the bandit's trap chest, which is a bad idea to try to open that up. Unless you have a key, but I didn't get a key. So let's just finish the quest. And I get some rewards. People went up to rank one, and this guy gained a trait, Eldritch Slayer. Accuracy and crit against elders, which is great. Welcome home, such as it is. <laughs> this squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Okay, so this is the larger structure surrounding the game where you slowly develop this hamlet up. Most of the, all these buildings are all wrecked right now, are boarded up, saying complete more quests to unlock. What I have so far is the graveyard, because in theory I could have lost a hero here, covered in the poisoned earth, on that first expedition. Oblivion. This is just let you view time, the... You will know the tragic extent of my failings. Stop interrupting me, oh my god. Okay, so this is let you review the... Um, early cinematics women and men soldiers and outlaws fools and corpses this is the stagecoach their way to us now that the road is clear which lets you recruit more heroes so the idea a sister of battle pious and unrelenting mm -hmm. the idea here is that you're building a roster of, of troops that you send out into the into the dungeon you don't maintain a single set of, of heroes you have a, a bunch of them because people need time to recuperate in between missions so you need to have multiple teams the first two heroes are always a um, a plague doctor and a vestal it's a set just so that you um, end up at least getting one healer otherwise you can't do very much okay so uh, this is also where you can do upgrades so before we head out I'm gonna upgrade some things the stagecoach lets you increase the number of heroes you get per turn and how many total heroes you can hold. I'm gonna get both of those. Word is traveling. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. We'll make it we easier to use this. do the next round. Okay. A mecca of madness and morbidity. <laughs> so begins. There's only one mission available except for the darkest dungeon, which is a level six dungeon, so these level one guys would not do very well there. We don't have any trinkets or anything, no items, so we just have to head in. So you can carry in some supplies. Measured now in gold, later in blood. I'll take a few things. I don't think I need any of those. Uh... some torches.
Okay. So this is the first real dungeon. You see it's a much larger map, more rooms. And it's um it's actually fixed. It's always the same for every playthrough. The monsters can be in slightly different places, but the layout is the same. So just uh for the new heroes, the Plague Doctor is a focus on, on um damage over time abilities. Uh so I can uh put blights on people that deal damage um, each turn. My Vestal's my healer, and she can also stun. So let's get going. Okay, so there are little objects in the hallways, or sometimes in the rooms, which you can investigate. Sometimes they'll give you loot, sometimes they'll be traps and uh, can harm your hero, or help your hero sometimes if you're lucky. You can also use items like the shovel, the medicinal herbs, in order to get a better result, but only it depends on what the item is. They're called curios. So my torch level just went down. When your torch is full, then you receive a bonus. Monsters are more likely to be surprised. You're more likely to be able to scout further ahead when the torch starts going down, you receive a malice. You start taking more stress damage. You start taking more crit critical hits. You're less able to dodge. But at the same time, when those stress when the torch is lower, you get more loot. It's a risk reward sort of thing. Okay. So this is a simple fight. These two bone rabbles, just uh, skeletons with clubs, only have eight hits, and they can't dodge, and they're slow. And this turn, they were surprised. So this is kind of a trying to slowly walk you in. It's not trying to uh, overwhelm you. Okay, so I stunned that guy. What happens when, when a monster gets stunned is they miss their current turn, but the following turn, they receive a, ch a um, reduced chance to be stunned. So you can't just stun someone indefinitely while your rest of your party wails away at them. It's sort of a denying them a turn so that your other heroes can uh, get some damage on the rest of the team. Another one falls. Little bit of gold. A trifling victory. But a victory nonetheless. <laughs> An unlocked strong box. So this could give me some loot or it could be trapped. Let's see. Ah, it was loot. Hacks Another shovel. With loot are often low on supplies. Alright, so I like to sort my inventory a bit, just so that um it's easier for me to conceptually deal with it. So I like to put all my gold things in the lower left and the curios in the right side. Let's keep going. Even big, the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. <laughs> a big wall of rubble? You have to use a shovel to make it go away. If you um if I didn't have a shovel I could clear it by hand, but it would cause uh stress to everybody. Okay. So this is a more complicated battle. You've got a skeleton with a sword. He's much more able to deal damage, and he's a bit faster. And you have a cultist. Now this cultist won't actually do much damage to you, but she will do stress damage to demoralize your heroes. So you can see right now all my heroes have two bars. They have a red bar, which is their health, and a white bar, which is their stress. When you get hit by enemies, you lose health. When you get demoralized, you gain stress. When you lose all your health, you're dead. When you gain a bunch of stress, then at first, you have a chance for something to go really wrong. You might, your hero might pick up a large debuff. They might pick, they might um, start attacking other heroes. They might start stabbing themselves. It's bad. Basically, you go slightly insane. When your stress gets really high, when it gets twice that amount, you get your hero has a heart attack and potentially dies. So, 
it's much easier to restore health than stress. So she is a pri uh, priority target. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stun her, though, if I can. So this is a 100% chance to, to stun, but she composes that with 25% resistance. So it's really a 75% chance to stun. We'll see if it works. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> okay. So she just gained 22 stress, which moved her quite a bit up. Let's see if I can just whack her. This oh, uh, uh. She's already out of turn. Nah, I'm not whacking. Double resist. Bad luck. This guy hasn't had his turn yet, because he's still got an action remaining. I'll see if I can... Well... Yeah, I'm just gonna see if I can take him out. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, okay. yeah. Can I get her this time? Oh! There we go. Finally, got her stunned. Alright, so you see she missed her turn, but she picked up a buff that gives her 40% stun resist. There, stunned him too. Now we got her. Them no quarter. Mm. There. So this guy has two health left, and he has a bleed on him, or a blight on him, that will do four damage a turn. So he's dead. As soon as he gets another turn, he'll die immediately. So I can just, uh, instead of having to keep worrying about him, I can just heal up a bit. Weapon that cuts on its own. <laughs> okay. So, my torch is dropped down below 50%, so I'm not receiving uh, any sort of benefit in terms of combat ability or scouting. So, I'm going to use two torches to pull me back up to 100% to 98%, which will potentially give me a scout when I get in this room. It lets me see what these two hallways are. Yeah. So I can see that there is items on the, in this hallway and the hallway and in this room. And over here, there's a battle with a chest. So I'm going to go that way. The key. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. <laughs> The narrator is so encouraging. Okay, so I know I'm facing a battle, but I've scouted it, so I won't be surprised by it. When you're surprised, it'll shuffle your party, so you won't be in the the optimal spots anymore. And sometimes, so, so your abilities might not work. Like, her heal only works from the back two ranks. More on that later. Okay, here's another new guy. Another cultist. This guy hits a bit weaker than the soldier with the sword, the skeleton with the sword, but he can do bleed damage because those are sharp. So let's try to stun her. Worked this time. <laughs> Since we got three guys, I'm going to go ahead and use my Grape Shot Blast. This will hit all of them, but for. Uh, 60% reduced damage, so it's a bit better than just hitting one of them. Let's see if I can stun this guy. Nope. I don't. Crusader's starting to take some real damage, but you know, that's his job. He's sitting in the front, he's tanking. Ah. 
So she pulled him from the back rank into the second rank. Which reduces the number of moves you can use because I had him set up to be in the back rank. Or rather, the game by default had him set up to be in the back rank. Let's, uh, let's try to heal my Crusader. Continually onslaught. Destroy them See, all. he's not in a position where he can stun her again or light her or anything. He can still hit this guy, but most of his abilities don't work in the second rank. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. And now this guy can't do anything because he can't hit the back rank and there are corpses in the way. So I might as well just... Uh, I'll use Bulwark of Faith, which will... Uh, raise my torch value a little bit. It gives me a buff to reduce my damage. But also makes it so that some enemies can hit me for harder. Now he's in the back rank and he can't do anything, so all we can do is try to move forward. But now people are set up so they can attack ranks. So. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Some gold, some busts, which are relics. These are used to upgrade your um, your Hamlet. So useful. Okay, this. After all the moving around, we ended up in the correct order again. Okay, so here's a chest. I'm going to use a skeleton key on it, and it will give me more loot than if I just opened it. Some more food. Let's use some food on my Crusader, just to give him some more health. He's still got a bleed, but it's only for one more damage. Okay, so we didn't scout this hallway. It's unknown. We'll have to see how it goes. Watch your step. Quite a bit of damage and some stress. Let's give him a bit more food. Uh, I am going to torch up in the hopes of getting a scout for these rooms. Nope, didn't happen. Sad. Ah. Uh. A fortune waiting to be spent. Lots of food, an item that only a bounty hunter can use, which I don't have, and some gold. So that happened because she has Plutomania. She's manic for money, so that means that for some curios she'll automatically try to loot it without me telling her to. That in this case that worked out for the good, but often it'll not work out well. hunger check. So we're forced to eat food even though we don't we are we, these guys have full health. If we didn't have food, everyone would take damage and stress. I do have a lot of food though. I've got 20 food. So for a scout. That was good. Critical scout, so it saw not just one corridor, but two corridors uh, away from me. It's always in a radius around that room. So this hallway has uh, another brick wall, or a uh, pile of rocks that I need to shovel, and then there's a, a treasure chest. Okay, so this is a little gamey. I can tell that there are only two more fights in this entire dungeon. So I think I'm gonna kill my torch. And now the 
darkness holds dominion. So now when Black I open death. when I open this treasure chest, it'll give me more loot. See, plus 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 loot. My heroes are all pretty strong, except for this guy is a bit low, but he'll hold out. So some more new enemies. Losing the torch really increase, really improves the music too. Makes it all more dramatic. <laughs> so this guy is a bone defender. He's got a big shield. He doesn't hit very hard, but uh, he has 25% prot. So he'll take a quarter reduced damage. This guy, the bone courtier, he'll um, he's like the, the the female cultist in that he'll stress you out rather than trying to deal damage to you directly. The Arbalist uh, can do a lot of range damage. They're kind of the main DPS character of this group. And they can hit everybody, so taking them out will be a priority. I'll try to stun them both. Worked. So the Courier had already used his turn. Uh, so he'll be stunned next turn. Stun. So, when um, she uses her stun ability, she makes torch. So that kind of negated what I was trying to do. <laughs> uh, let's, let's try to take out this guy. Okay, so I have one ability that will hit both of them for 3 to 6 or 3 to 7 for this guy. This guy has protection. Or, my main strike, which will do 6 to 12. So that will guarantee to kill this guy if it hits. Whereas this will only give you a chance to kill that guy. Let's go for the guarantee. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. Okay, next turn. I think we need to work on taking out this guy. Okay, so I'm going to throw a plague grenade back here. That will blight both of these guys, hopefully. Okay, so next time this guy gets a turn, he's going to be taking 4 damage. He only has 2 health, so he's dead. done. Uh, let's get some healing. Ooh, nice crit. So this guy's dead, right? Yeah. He only has three health. Heal. And he's dead. And because it was dark, if not completely dark, Triumphant we do get some better loot. A fall. So this right here is more money than we had from the rest of the dungeon. I can't pick it up, all of it. Uh, I don't need another shovel, so I'll get rid of that. Now I could leave, but I don't want to. I want to stick around and and see what's in this room. Okay, back to darkness. Secrets and wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners of this place. Ooh, lots of busts. Um, we don't need torches anymore. So when you go back into a corridor that you've already been in, there's a chance for it to respawn enemies. It's always a risk. Uh, so this respawned a trap. 
so I can look at my heroes and they tell us, now that I know the trap is there, I can disarm it. And my highwayman is the best at dealing with that. Okay. Down to this room. Trap again. Okay. Let's just get her up a little bit. Last fight. Two sword guys, one arbalist. Let's see. They're all kind of dangerous. Let's, uh... Let's see if I can stun. Well... Yeah, let's see if I can stun. So when my guys crit, we all get a slight reduction in stress. It's, you know, hurt. So what happened there was this guy, their DPS, heavy DPS person, He's now in the front ranks, and he was intended to be back here. That's where he started out. And because he's um, up in front, he can't do his high DPS quarrel anymore. Yes, he, he can only bayonet jab. So. So this guy's dead. He'll die next time he gets a turn. They really want me to, um... So too will resistance. Okay, so we have a fountain. This fountain will, if you use holy water on it, have a chance of either restoring a lot of health or restoring stress. This person is my most stressed out person, and they're my healer. So I'm probably going to want them next run also. Let's see if we can reduce her stress a bit. Yeah, she does. Okay, she gets both. 20% stress reduction. Or stress heal. Okay, one more item. That curio right there. Let's see if it's worth walking out into this cord. The darkness holds much worse than mere trickery and boogeyman. That is a coin, maybe. Just a little bit. Good run. I think we're done now. Let's head home. So at 3,000 is the base reward, and there's 6,000 in loot, and a lot of curios, mostly these busts. We also get an item that increases your chance to move them, but to move when you're uh, using a skill, but reduces your speed, which is a terrible item. Speed is so important. The two new guys went up a level. The other ones got some... Uh, Dismas and Renald both got a bit more XP towards level 2. And for facing the stress of the dungeon and succeeding, they all got positive traits. Or, well, the three of these good. We're not, uh, Dismas is now an airing, uh, plus damage to, to range skills, which is great, because he's. Um, I can use him in the gunner role rather than uh, stabbing with his sword so much. Mankind Hater, that's okay, I guess. She's not really a damage dealer, she's a, uh, a healer. So. She doesn't really need a damage stat. 
unyielding chance to not die. That's always good. Once our estate was the envy of this land. <laughs> now that we've gotten back, the tavern is unlocked and the abbey is unlocked. But I think that's enough for now. We've discussed a bit of the mechanics. I think we will delay the next run until next time. So thank you everyone, I'm Michael Young and this is Darkest Dungeon.